Hello Internet, Big Dave here, and I am cheap. How cheap? Well, I'm so cheap that all week this week I'm doing a free-to-play first-person shooter week. Yes, indeed, we are one game into first-person shooter week. Combat Arms has been completed. Made some mistakes in that video, but we have learned from them. Today we are playing Project Blackout. Project Blackout started out in 2008 in Asia. I'm going to guess probably Korea. And uh, it's been in the States and in Europe for a year or two now. It is run by SG Interactive, and let's get things going. Of course, on that title screen you saw the scantily clad woman. Not a big fan of that, but it sells, I guess. Or, in this case, gets people to play a free game? I don't know. So I don't know what a combination server is, but I went ahead and joined one. Here we are. We can see the novice servers. I like that. Gives the uh, newbies a place to kind of beat up on each other. Nice little daily news crawl here. That's always fun. And you will see Dino Mode. Dino Mode is the big special mode of this particular game. Instead of going with zombies, they went with dinosaurs. Yes, indeed. We will play Dino Mode when we do the gameplay footage later in the video. Let's go ahead and get things off to a fast start here. We will pick a nice and full open server. So we are dropped right at the server selection screen. That's always nice. Keeps your uh, focus on what the game is all about, and that's actually playing the game. It doesn't dump you into some silly menu or the shop or anything like that. Right here. You can just double-click, and I could be playing right now. We have some active missions over here, and here's your players list. One thing I will say is I had to quickly disable the invite system because you are spammed by blind invites the moment that you come into this room. So uh, you can go under options if you'd like and close that out. Yep, let's take a look. We've got missions over here and uh, we'll look at the missions first. So the missions are pretty simple. It's, uh, it's just asking you to do certain things, uh, certain pretty simple things, and uh, it gets more complex as you go to the different uh, mission sets, but of course those are locked because I am still in training. You can get ribbons from completing an entire card of missions, and then you use those ribbons in the advanced combat training screen to choose ranks. You can rank up, you get little, uh, you get little perks, sometimes you get a little bit of a negative, and uh, it requires a certain amount of ribbons. So in this case it requires one ribbon, we have zero ribbons, so we cannot rank up in any fashion at this point. And eventually that spawns out into three distinct trees to kind of help you specialize your gameplay a little bit. That's pretty cool. You know, it adds that little extra layer of customization. You can try to, to customize things to your particular play style. Take a quick look at the inventory system here. I have already purchased a gun. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, we have our primary guns. You have an assault rifle a submachine gun, and a sniper rifle. This is sort of a roundabout way of assigning a class to you, but you can switch on the fly, so there's no actual class switching. Secondary weapon, melee, and a thrown weapon, as well as special. In this case, you get a smoke grenade. You can buy different avatars and some basic gear you can also purchase. Uh, let's see, you can also get your, dra your, uh, di I said dragon. your, uh, your dinosaur avatar. So uh, you can go in the shop, I'm assuming eventually, I don't think they have any right now, and you can actually make your dinosaur in dinosaur mode look a little bit different. Uh, you have items, we'll talk about items in a minute. Items are like enhancements, they increase your experience gain, uh, give you things like perks, like fast reloading, stuff like that. So I've already purchased a gun, like I said, so uh, I'll tell you about that as we look through the shop. Yes, indeed, the shop. So we've got two types of currencies in, currencies in this game. You can look down here in the center of the screen at the bottom. We have credits. Credits are your in-game currency. Points are your cash currency. So, uh, points and credits. If we look through here, of course the first few things we're going to see are go going to be points weapons. But we do get into the credits weapons as we scroll down a bit. Now, you have enough right off the bat to buy one of several different weapons, actually. And uh, I went ahead and bought the M4A1 with scope. So the way that this game works, as opposed to giving you a weapon for a certain amount of days, it gives you a weapon for a certain amount of uses. Pretty cool. That means that a casual player like me doesn't buy something for three days, use it three times, and then regret having spent the credits on it, the hard-earned credits. 
So I chose the M4 because it has a nice little scope. And I do like this feature. If you click on the details, it actually shows you what your scope's going to look like, as well as giving you the pluses and minuses that the gun provides. So you get a scope, you get increased accuracy, reduced recoil, but it reduces your mobility a little bit because it's a slightly bigger weapon. Of course, all the cool guns, or the guns with extremely cool features, cost points. Some of the good guns that you can get with credits are gated by requiring certain titles. So I don't have a huge problem with that, but, uh, you know, kind of sucks for a newbie. But, but in the end, it just gives you more of a reason to play. And if you're really impatient, buy some points. I don't have any problem with them using a system like that. I think that's fine because it gives you the ability to still get good weapons. It just means you have to invest some time in the game to get them. Uh, so you've got your submachine guns, your typical stuff, um, MP5s. You've got your... Uh, all your modified MP5s, all that cool stuff. Uh, of course, the P90, everybody's favorite giant clip weapon. You got your different uh, sniper rifles. You know, the selection in this game is pretty good. And then you've got some interesting uh, melee weapons, dual knives. You can dual wield pistols, p pistol with a blade dealy, like a stabby dealy on it, like that. Uh, different types of grenades, you know. It's pretty typical stuff. Avatars get some masks and helmets that you can choose from, and you can also change your entire avatar. There's uh, one avatar for red and one avatar for blue that you can buy with credits. Other than that, everything costs points. Finally, let's get to items. Now, items, this is sort of the place where things get shaky for me. Uh, most of this stuff, in fact, 99% of this stuff, I don't have a huge problem with. Quick respawn times, the ability to inspect people, um... You know, extraction, which lets you exit a game before it ends and still get the rewards, because most of these types of games make you stay to the end to actually get the rewards. Quick respawns, cr higher credits, uh, so you acquire credits faster, XP boosts, all that stuff's fine. The thing that I have a problem with is when you make an essential game feature, or what I consider to be an essential game feature, into a pay option. And that would be this right here, weapon pickup. Normally in the game, you can only pick up weapons that your teammates drop. With this, you can pick up weapons that the enemy drops. I consider picking up any weapon at any time to be an essential feature of these games. If I can kill someone who has the best weapon in the game, there's no reason that I shouldn't be able to pick that up. In fact, the reward for killing them should be being able to pick up their gun and use it. But in this case, they've made this into, a feature, into an item as opposed to a feature of the game. They're selling you what I consider an, an a, official, what I consider an essential feature. Some of this other stuff, I mean... It gives you some uh, invincibility when you respawn. I mean, it's none of it is extremely game-changing. You know, the ability to get more experience, get more money, these are all things that I have no problem with people paying for, changing your name, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, definitely have a problem with the weapon pickup being an actual pay item. And as you can see, of course, you can purchase it, you can only purchase it for days. You can't purchase it permanently. Yeah. You also have sets of items. Those are pretty straightforward. They give you a set of weapons that are more geared towards your class. Nice and simple. So that's pretty much the shop. As I said, when I came into the shop, I wanted to buy a weapon, and I bought the M4A1 with the scope. There you go. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all we need to cover here in the menu system. Let's go ahead and get things going, guys. Let's get a game, and let's get to the action. So we're going to start things off pretty quick into the action here. Watch this pro move by me. Mission complete. That's right. I didn't get killed by that grenade on accident. That was totally on purpose. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had a mission to kill myself, or to get killed. And there's me completing the mission to get a kill. These are the basic training missions, just trying to familiarize you with the game. So this is a deathmatch mode game, and it's very run and gun. It's, it's not really, really tactical. Uh, and I, and I kind of like it. I mean, I have to admit to actually uh, enjoying myself quite a bit in this particular game. I really had a lot of fun, uh, but this is not so much the tactical side of a tactical shooter. It's really more like the shooter side. So you're gonna kind of think that this is a show-off clip, but it's definitely not. If you just pay attention, I'm, I'm not doing super great. I mean, I'm getting killed a lot. Um, I just thought it was really kind of boring to watch endless clips of me dying over and over again. So uh, I, sh I put in some of my deaths and some of my triumphs just to try to kind of balance things out. But don't think that this is supposed to be some kind of a clip showing how pro I am, because it's just not. You guys dual wielding like golden pistols there. One's gold and one's... Yeah, that's cool. 
So again, you can see this is a very fast-paced mode. I mean, it's in a small space, these corridors creating bottlenecks, and just a lot of death happening here. Oh, and, and I can't really complain about this other than saying that it really doesn't feel very tactical. Um, but the, the actual gameplay, I love it. I mean, you see there, I, I gunned down the, the ad, essentially, that came up. I can't get my pistol out in time to take out that fellow, and my head goes rolling. Hmm... So, the, ga the guns in this game, uh, they feel nice. They have a good uh, response when you fire them. Uh, the scopes seem to function nicely. Uh, the grenades are especially visceral. Uh, when they explode, there's a... Here's one here. Boom! There's a, there's a good rumbling boom and a shaking of your screen. It just it feels good when it happens. I mean, it, it feels like combat. And uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. Here you'll see me taking a look at the in-game weapon swap. So I'm swapping over to my original assault rifle. This is the gun that you would get by default. Default. By default. And I get a, a, a lucky spray kill there, and I'm immediately back to the M4. So all in all, this mode was a lot of fun. It is deathmatch, like I say. Not a lot of strategy, not a lot of tactics going on. But I can't really complain too much, because as you'll see on the quick flash of the scoreboard here... I did all right. You know, I did all right. Let's take a look at the bomb mode, the classic bomb mode. Unfortunately, I was never able to get any footage where we actually made it to the bomb site because the other team was... They were hard as nails. I mean, they were good. So uh, we'll just have a little corridor action here. Uh, this is a nice choke point in this map, this staircase. Uh, it, it produced a lot of good drama and a lot of good action. Uh, like this. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm good. I'm invincible. I'm going to go take out this. Oh, she threw a grenade. Oh, no, she did. Darn it. So the blue team takes that round pretty easily, and every single round that I played in this bomb uh, bomb mode, we never planted the bomb. We never even almost seemed to be trying to plant the bomb. We just seemed to be trying to take out each other. And, you know, that's all right, but I wish the levels were designed in a little more of a bomb-friendly way, because I like planting the bomb. But that's bomb mode, again. Couldn't get any footage of the actual bomb. Let's move on to dinosaur mode. Yes, dinosaur. And I say it that way on purpose. Uh, watch Jurassic Park if you don't know why I say it that way. So I'm a raptor here, and uh, we are trying to prevent these soldiers from escaping. I suppose they're trying to escape with some sort of a secret, or we just want to eat them for lunch. And this fellow here is trying to hide. Not really sure if he understands the, the object of the game. It's not to hide, it's to escape. So you'll see some good footage here of me pursuing... He almost got out of my... Yeah, he's trying to lose me. He's getting stealthy over here in the tree line. You'll see some good footage of uh, raptor action here. And uh, you also get a couple gl glances at the T-Rex. The T-Rex is uh, randomly selected. One person gets to be the T-Rex. And the T-Rex kind of functions like a goalkeeper, so to speak. So uh, a couple guys here. Let's see if we can run them down. Notice he, he played it smart. He, he didn't go through the tunnel. He popped over to the side. But uh, we still still got him. Checking for his buddy over here. I, didn't, I don't know if he got by us or not, or if someone else got him. And about that time, the round ends, and now we are the escapers. We are the humans. Now, the way this, this works is that you score points by escaping, and the dinosaurs are trying to prevent your escape. So that's how the scoring system works. Uh, if you see up at the top, we've uh, there's a timer um, running down, and you can see the amount of escapes that the blue team got when they were the humans. We're the red team. They got one escape. We've already beat them with two escapes, and the escapes just keep on coming. I don't know if these guys just weren't familiar with the mode or what. This was only the second time I'd ever played the mode, and the first time was about 30 seconds of, of gameplay. This is the only map right now for Dino Mode. Whoa, that guy jumped out and scared the crap out of me. This is the only mo map for Dino Mode right now, but I know there's more stuff coming, including alternate skins for your dinosaur. Here's a good look at the T-Rex as he comes over to squash me. I try to run, but he steps on my face. And this time I'm going to be stealthy. I've got my eyes on him. Nope, he's seen me. And he roars, which is like his AoE attack, which is really cool, and chomps me in half. So we get a little bit of dinosaur action here, a little gunplay versus dinosaurs. And as we wrap things up, let's talk about Project Blackout. I like this game a lot. It was a lot of fun. It is a little bit more arcadey than a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the FPS is out there, but uh, all in all, I think it was a really good game. We'll look back on it at the end of the week, and until then, guys, take it easy.